we'll roll on. Perfect. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. Um, we have a guest today, which is uh, Lisa. Lisa, say your last name for me so I get it right. Mixes. Mixes. That's what it. That's what it looks like. Yeah. It's a mixes. And we met at the AAETT. Yes, more letters. The American Association of Equine Ther Therapists and Technicians. Technicians. Um, in May and had such a great time um, yakking with each other. And Lisa's incredibly knowledgeable that I thought she'd be an excellent guest to talk about our topic today, which is what is PEMF. So thank you, Lisa, for joining me today. This is awesome. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So Lisa, just ever give everybody uh, like your, your bio background, um, sure. so we know where you're coming from. Sure thing. So I have been with Respawn Systems. We do uh, manufacture laser and PEMF. Um, I say PEMF, P-E-M-F, PEMF therapy for um, actually since 1983. We've been manufacturing and I've been with the company about 10 years. Um, I am currently um, president of the organization. So dabble in a little bit of everything, which I love, um, especially love getting out in the field um, and, and um getting in the barns and getting in the clinics and, and working with people hands-on. So, and you have a horse background, right? Actually, I do not have a horse background. Oh. My background is um, biology and more on the academic side. Um, yeah. I, I, my horse back, my horse experience consists of entirely when I get to get out with my customers and clients right now. It's just, oh, wow. So that's, yeah. that's really cool actually. Um, and, and always an interesting perspective when someone uh, is not a horse person because you have to figure out our world, which can be rather confusing. <laughs> it's a great world. It's funny, though, because it is it is definitely, um, it's a world, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's like, uh, and then you wonder how many, okay, here we have the equestrian equine world. And then there's the same thing for, you know, water polo or you know different kinds of sports and activity it's just everybody's in their own bubble and world but i love the, the i think the thing i like most about the equine world is the it is that like synergistic relationship between horse and rider um horse and owner horse and rider and it, it is just and especially when it comes to like therapy equipment um you know our equipment is only as effective in the hands of the person who's using it. So somebody who's in tune to how their horse um, reacts or, or kind of what this, what the, um, how the horse can tell them if they're feeling pain or if this feels good. And, and just really that synergistic relationship between horse and rider is what makes, um, makes our equipment so effective because you can't just, you can't just put it on and, and it's a miracle. It's, it's knowing, how you're going to use it, watching the horse's response. Um, and I, so I love it, love it, love it. When I get riders that are just, or, or owners that are just so incredibly passionate um, and know their horse. I mean, they can just, they don't even, they don't even have to be like right next to them. They can kind of feel an energy, you know, so to speak of just what kind of mood the horse is in and, and vice versa. So it's, it's just, um, it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And, um, I think you bring up a really good point, which you can apply to any tool. It's all in how mm -hmm. you apply it. Yep, yep. exactly. So, um, you know, I think a lot of times people think that if they get a tool, whatever it is, right, it's going to be the miracle thing that's yes. going to solve the problem. But the, it really is, um, it really depends on how it's used. Absolutely. Yep, yep, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so um, first question, what does PEMF PEMF stand for? Do you, and, and actually I'm going to back up for two seconds. Do you, I, I have a presentation. Do you Ooh, want Oh, awesome. To? Okay, I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know how, how, how prepared I was. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Some people are really prepared and some people are like, just, you know, stream of consciousness. So yeah, let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's and I it. don't like my little, I mean, because you, you asked the first question that I answer in my presentation. So I'm like, what yeah. is PEMF um, and what does it stand for? So I'll, I'll hop on there, but um, I can see the chat, which is fabulous. Is that where people are going to pop questions or do you yeah. ask questions? Okay. And then um, I ask lots of random questions. Okay. And I'm assuming I'll be able to still hear you as I, I don't know how this. Oh yeah. Works. And you can probably like stop share and reshare. Okay. All right. So um, by all means, like ask questions, stop me, jump in. It does not have to go with my flow. Um, I'm a go with the flow kind of gal. So yeah. 
All right, so let's see if I can do this right. I'm gonna turn on the screen share. I want to do, oh boy, I have way too many things open. What is this? Um, window, beautiful, okay. And by the way, it's only seven o'clock at night in South Africa. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's not bad at all. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Okay. All right. So to your question, um, what does PEMF stand for? PEMF stands for pulsed electromagnetic field um, and then therapy. Obviously, we tag on the end. So pulsed electromagnetic field. So the big question I always get, and, and I love the science stuff. Uh, obviously, I said my background is um, biology and science um, and physics is, I know it's silly, but I absolutely, if I had to do it again, I'd be a physicist. I just am fascinated by That's it. That's why I wanted you because I knew that you had that sciencey background and you could explain the stuff to us. And I like to try to like simplify because it it's, you know, it, it can get quite complicated. So I try to simplify it for, to, so that everybody can kind of get it. So we have pulsed electromagnetic fields. So we have two components to that. We have the electric field. Um, basically what that is, is that um, or, or the area surrounding a stationary electrically charged particle. That is an electric field. It can be positive, it can be negative, um, and it's measured in the difference between that charged particle or voltage. So, so but that's the electric aspect. Um, and I like to kind of relate that to um, when we talk about the body. So when we get an EKG, for instance, um, on your heart, so they're looking, um, you know, to see what if, if your arrhythmia is off or what's going on in the heart. So an EKG actually measures um, strength and timing of electrical impulses passing through your heart. So your body is full of these electrical charges. Um, that control everything from nerve communication, movement of muscles, muscle contraction. Um, and it's extremely important that we keep those electrical charges and those impulses in balance because um, otherwise things can start to get out of whack. So your body already, your body is running on electrical charges, um, which power all of these interactions. So now we have part two, um, which is the magnetic field. So a magnetic field is basically produced by moving these electrical charges. So they can move around each other um, and they then generate this magnetic field. So another, an example of magnetic field, the earth. So we have the, um, you know, we all learned in our science class back in elementary school, the earth has its core. Inside that core is um, iron molten, it's a hot, hot iron. So iron, as we all know, is, um, is a magnetic type. It has electric charges. It's a magnetic type of, um, of metal. So as the earth spins on its axis, that, uh, that core starts to spin. So these electrically charged particles start to move and that generates an electric, uh, pardon me, generates the magnetic field, um, the earth's magnetic field. One of the huge things that that magnetic field does, as you can see from the image, um, here is that it um, protects us from the solar flares and solar wind that comes from the sun. So if the earth did not have its magnetic field and its magnetic shield, we would not be here as we know it. So, so this, well, this is like way more than, this is so cool. So, Cause I'm learning about the earth, which I didn't really understand this. So, <laughs> so, so we have iron in the center of the earth. Yep. The the, is the spin of the earth a result of the electromagnetic field? Maybe the I'm getting off. The spin of the earth is not a result. I, actually, good question. I'm not sure exactly how we spin, but it is that spin that then spins the core inside of the earth. Um, and then because there is those electrically charged um, particles in there, they start to move, which then generates a magnetic field. Wow. And so that magnetic field actually projects out far enough to protect oh, yeah. us from the solar winds. Absolutely. Absolutely. No magnetic field on the earth. Um, we, we, our planet is not as we know it. Because it diverts the, the, those flares and that, that radiation, basically that radiation, it gets deflected by them, by the magnetic shield. 
wow, that's really cool. I had no idea. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's, it's, um, I like to, to kind of equate, like to bring these two pieces in a way that people can kind of understand because you can't see these fields, right? I mean, we're used to kind of going with see and feel. You can't feel it, you know, as we're sitting here today. I'm like, I don't feel the magnetic field, um, but it is there and it serves an extremely important purpose um, in, in interactions, not only with, with um, radiation from the sun, but, um, you know, as we know, birds, migratory birds use these magnetic fields to follow them as they migrate. Um, they're an, an incredibly important part of our, um, of our, of our whole um, ecosystem, um, including our bodies themselves. Yeah, because because our bodies have an electromagnetic field, right? You got it. Good point. So we are going to jump to the next slide. <laughs> um, so the electro, so we talked about the electric side of it. We talked about the magnetic side of it. So now we combine those and we get an electromagnetic field. So basically what that means is we take these electrically charged particles um, that start to move around and create a magnetic field. And now if we if we take these particles and this field and we accelerate it or we decelerate it, then we get this combined electromagnetic field. And believe it or not, electromagnetic fields um, are one of the four fundamental forces of nature. Um, the other one everybody's quite familiar with is gravity. Yeah. So without the electromagnetic fields that we, that, that force that we are exposed to, we do not have nature. So we need gravity. We need electromagnetic fields and forces. Well, okay. So there's four. What are the other? So the strong and strong and weak. That's, those aren't quite as exciting. I mean, they still obviously a fundamental purpose, but <laughs> so we have gravity, electromagnetic forces, and then strong forces and weak forces. Can you give me an example of a strong force and a weak force? That I cannot. Okay. I know. I wish I could. I should, I should, I should study up more on my physics, but. Okay. Just, just um, curious. I yeah. mean, gravity, I'm familiar with electromagnetic. I understand and strong and weak. Now we understand electromagnetic, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and just a heads up, I can't see, I mean, maybe if I escape on my, I'm kind of afraid to, I don't want to lose you, but <laughs> I, I can hear you, but I can't see anything else and I can't see the chat. So just a heads up. Okay. I can see the chat and we're in, we, we're in two little pictures down in the lower part of my screen. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, I think so, my, my screen share. So far, this somebody's just saying they were struggling with like with their Zoom, but I think they're okay now. Oh, perfect. Not, okay, not Zoom, Zoom. Yes, Zoom. <laughs> but it's working quite well. Okay. Um. All right. So now we have electromagnetic fields, and probably you're kind of familiar with any kind of forces or fields. You get these lovely equations. I'm not. There will no be there'll be no quiz. Um, this is just kind of an image to give you an indication of these fields are comprised of frequencies. They're comprised of a wave form. Um, they're comprised of amplitudes and intensities. So they have all the characteristics as you you know if you think of your traditional um, forces um, you know back from physics. So they have all of these aspects to them. And how those pieces come together determine if this is going to be a beneficial electromagnetic field or potentially a harmful electromagnetic field. So I get the question all the time, um, how is the, because the minute you say EMF, which is electromagnetic field, Sometimes people get very wary, um, which which is makes sense because we have heard and there's been in the press, you know, a lot of, of um, news about the dangers of electromagnetic fields. So I love this slide because it helps to put into perspective how pulsed electromagnetic fields for therapeutic use are very different from those um, man-made, I guess, um, electromagnetic fields from devices. And really one of the big defining characteristics is the frequency that these are emitted at. So the earth itself, the electromagnetic field of the earth, emits at a frequency somewhere, um, I think the average frequency is about eight hertz, um, but depending on where you are on the earth, um, on the planet, um, closer to the equator, further away, time of day, the axis, it's somewhere between about one to 30 hertz is the earth's 
um, magnetic. That's the natural field you're exposed to on a regular basis. I'm going to ask you to define Hertz. Hertz, um, Hertz is a, as a, um, unit of measurement of frequency. Okay. So all frequencies are measured, um, in Hertz or Hertz or pulses per second. Uh, basically is what a Hertz is. It's also a pulse per second. So that's the unit of measurement that we're going to talk about for frequency. And then um, there's also a different one for intensity. So I will um, get into that one soon as well. Okay. So your, your PEMF fields, the things that you're using for um, therapeutic healing, usually all fall under that 100 hertz um, frequency. And that's because they're more in tune with the natural frequency that, that you're exposed to on a regular basis. We then start to get into higher um, frequencies. We have extremely lows, which are your appliances, your 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 um, computer screens, um, things like the uh, appliances for the most part. Then we get into the intermediates, which are the 300 to about 10 megahertz. Those are your computer screens. Um, and then we get into really high, high frequency. And these are things like your mobile phones, microwaves, um, MRI machines, um, radio frequencies. So, so their frequencies are defining factors. So the high, 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 very high frequencies, like the microwaves, mobile phones, those are the ones that are really far from the natural frequency that you're exposed to through and the we just happen to pack them with us all the time yeah we do i know i know i don't yeah i wouldn't even go there uh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah 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 um yes we do so you you, you gotta wonder um how these are interfering with um your natural exposure so that's also where pemfs come into play um so yeah, I'll, I'll keep going because they kind of answer um, this point as well as we've got all these, we're exposed to all this stuff that we've created um, at these different frequencies um, compared to what we're naturally exposed to from the earth. Now, how do we combat that um, in a nutshell? So, so we've talked about frequency being a major part of these electromagnetic fields. I'm going to, there are different waveforms, there are different amplitudes, but as it relates to this conversation, especially with, with equine use, um, I wanna just touch on intensity. So you have a wide variety of, of intensity of PEMF fields. So intensity, the measurement, unit of measurement we use to define the intensity of an electromagnetic field um, is Gauss. It could be in Tesla or micro Tesla, milli Tesla. So Tesla and Gauss are sort of used um, interchangeably, kind of like uh, centimeters and inches. Um, you can pop into Google, um, you know, just a, 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 a conversion from Gauss to Tesla or milli Tesla to Gauss. Um, if you're kind of looking at different devices and want to see how they compare, um, you can you can just pop into a, um, a converter into into Google to do that. So we have. Um, most of your blanket devices, um, wearable PEMF devices are going to be on that low intensity. Um, so, and when I say low intensity, you're probably going to be under, let's say, 100 Gauss. Um, and then we get into the higher intensity machines. Um, and those are going to be your, um, like your pulse machines, your MagnaWave machines, um, those higher intensity PEM systems where you usually see the white coil. Um, those are going to be very high intensity systems. Um, so there, the big difference on intensity, um, two things. Number one is that intensity gets you depth of field. Um, so let's say we're on the very, very low end. If you've got a very, very low intensity, it may just be reaching the fascia. Um, it may just be giving you a nice fascial release because it's just not strong enough to get deeper into tissue. Um, and then you've got your mid range that probably, you know, on, an, on our blanket, for instance, you're going to get about 10 inches into the tissue. And then you get really high intensity machines um, that can really get through very deep into the tissue. Um, it, when you're when you're looking at different PEMF devices, um, I, I like to to kind of equate it to what your objective is. Every one of them 
the very, very low, the middles and the highs all serve their purpose. Um, and we're going to get into kind of how these affect. So, so I like to, there is no, it's, there is no one size fits all, you know, as we were kind of talking earlier. So there are different levels of intensity and different levels of devices because they all serve slightly different purposes, which we will get into in just a moment. Okay. Um, whoops. Behind. So, so basically your cells in your body all have a magnetic field and they're all influenced by these things that are coming at you, the earth's magnetic field, the EMFs that are coming from your phone, your cell phone, your computer. Um, all of these are impacting our cells and our bodies. And what we want to do is to find the PEMF at the right intensity, the right frequency, the right application duration to positively influence the cell and all of the cell signaling processes. So I, I like this slide because a lot of people are like, you know, some people have never heard of PEMF until they bump into it in the barn or, you know, usually they're not seeing it on the human side. It's more so on the animal side. But PEMF has been around and studied for an extremely long time. Um, actually, I, we do laser therapy as well, um, much longer than laser therapy. Um, it was actually FDA approved back in the 70s for the treating um, and healing of non-union bone fractures and to stimulate bone growth. Um, and that was an FDA clearance back in the 1970s for a PEMF device. Um, and since then, we've had other approvals. Um, in the 90s, uh, we had muscle stimulation. In 04 and 06, we had cervical fusion. 06 is interesting with the um, treatment of depression and anxiety um, because you'll probably notice those who use kind of a low to mid level PEMF device um, for your horses that it makes them very relaxed. Um, and we get the question all the time. We designed our devices and most PEMF um, for equine have designed their devices for soft tissue healing um, to impact the, the healing or inflammation or pain in soft tissue. So the depression and anxiety effect, I'm not, and we are not on our end, at least hundred percent sure if that, if the, if the relaxation you're seeing in your horse is coming from that that feeling of ah, after that inflammation comes out and the pain is reduced, or if it's actually impacting signals in the brain, cell signaling, as we talked about all these, all your cells talk to each other through little electrical co communications. So we could be directly impacting those electrical communications in the brain itself um, to help address depression and anxiety. Um, more studies need to be happening on that, um, but different frequencies of devices um, are approved for different types of uses. And then we have, um, as which, which a lot of you are probably very familiar with, the effect of PEMF on pain, pain management. So it is a studied modality, a very studied modality. There are thousands of research papers on PubMed and online about PEMF. Um, the one thing I think that makes it, um, that makes it confusing is that as we talked about on that previous slide, PEMF consists of frequency, waveform, um, intensity, amplitude. There are all these variables that are part of PEMF and there's so many of them and so many different combinations of them that it sometimes becomes hard to define what is best for what. Um, so that's where, I, you know, more studies to come. There's a lot of, I think, promising research about PEMF to come as we really start to narrow down very specific frequencies for very specific conditions. Um, there's just so many different combinations of all these that it's gonna take us a long time to get there. So basically, if we can recap, um electromagnetic fields that exist for ever forever um we've discovered that we can man use electromagnetic fields mm -hmm. um they've been used for a lot like i like i'm just thinking about you know like just regular magnets that's an electromagnetic field. Yes. 
That's a magnetic field. Yes, yes. And you and magnets have been used um, for for centuries uh, for healing. Like you know, back into Roman Roman and Greek times, you'll you'll see um, incidences of magnets used for healing. The one, the big difference between a PEMF field and a static magnet field is going to be your depth of penetration. Um, it is the the pulsed electromagnetic field drives the field deeper into the tissue. Um, than a static magnet. So statics are going to be, you, you usually notice them more um, on trigger points, you know, something where they can have more of, they, they're not going to penetrate too much, too deep into the tissue. But essentially um, we're looking at a, um, a similar idea. It's just a question of that this can, can penetrate more, but it's, but we've been doing this for a long time, messing around with electromagnetic fields. Oh yeah. Very long time. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, Obviously, these studies would have been in humans, and yes. they were messing yep. around with well, animals, humans. Okay. Um, to get the FDA clearance, you need to have them in humans, for obviously. So, um, yes. So, the, the nice thing about seeing this depth of history as well is it really establishes the modality as a safe modality um, that it's been approved since the you know 1979s for treatment on people so it is a very safe modality um, with very limited side effects if any um, that you'll and when you read through all the papers the you know one of the big things you always see is uh, no side effects fine no side effects no fi which is very unusual even when you're looking at a pain medication right like any of the pains <laughs> there's always a side watch effect. tv on a drug ad okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you can't even keep up okay so so we've established that it's been used in humans uh yep. fda approved for a long time it's something that's been uh, we can say that PMF now is sort of like the next level of the idea of a magnet. In yes. other words, you're yes. messing with the electromagnetic field, but this can do more. More. It can do more. And it's the pulsing piece of it. And it's also the intensity that's going to get, that's going to do more. So okay. you need to read part of this slide because our little pictures are covering the bottom right and I can't okay. Okay. To move us. So, okay. so basically now the question is, okay, we know the body, you know, from our EKGs, we know the body talks, everything in the body talks to itself through electrical charges. Um, cell signaling happens because of electrical charges. Um, you think about um, back to your, you know, biology 101 in high school, you have these little pumps in your cell membrane and the positive and the negative, they want to go in one direction or the other because of how they're attracted. So we know the body is full of positive and negative charges um, and everything talks to each other that way. So what this side is, is that basically you have a cell, a healthy cell, which has a normal membrane resting potential, which is at a defined voltage um, between negative 30 to 90 um, millivolts. That is a, a healthy cell membrane. So Think of your cells as little batteries. Every single cell is a little battery. And when it's fully charged um, and healthy, it's got a very defined voltage. And what that leads to is a beautiful flow of your ions through the membrane, oxygen into the cell, waste out of the cell, life processes flourish. But then we have a problem when we get a damaged cell. And this simply could be age where things start to slow down, things aren't communicating as effectively. It could be an acute injury, um, a suspensory tear, acute tissue trauma. It could be systemic, um, viral or bacterial that is damaging the cell. Um, and basically what then happens is this beautiful fully charged battery that was perfectly in balance, positive and negatively, now is out of whack. It has gone out of balance. So the result of that is edema. You get swelling and inflammation, uh, which then obviously results in pain. We get reduced circulation. Things are not flowing through that membrane the way they should be. Um, cellular respiration is impaired. Everything starts to get impacted. All of your, of your cell signaling is slowing down and is not as effective as it should be. So the body itself naturally should start to heal um, in the case of an Ill illness or injury um, and fight these things off and bring everything back to normal. But sometimes we need help. 
So that's where the PEMF field succeeds. So what we what the PEMF field does, think about it as as recharging your battery, recharging that cell and helping to return it to that normal, healthy resting membrane potential, things, oxygen starts and nutrients and minerals, everything starts to come back in the way it should. Everything, the toxins, the carbon dioxide come out and your cell now is working back at an efficient level. So, so you, because we, the, the earth's magnetic field is what is supposed to help all of us stay in, in balance to the point that Wendy brought up earlier, we're surrounded by computers and cell phones and radio waves and all these man-made frequencies that are blocking that natural magnetic field that we would thrive in. So think of PEMF as taking that natural electromagnetic field that your body grew up born and, and was designed to be in. And we amplify that signal to get beyond all these other frequencies that are bombarding you, number one, and to get and to help get through to a cell that is not as receptive to it because it's hurt, um, because it's old, um, or because it's injured, or it's, it's, you know, it's getting hit by viruses. So basically, we are taking a natural field and we are amplifying it in the right frequency to trigger the body and to recharge those cells. So, so basically, it's like, if you had a rechargeable battery that got drained, this is going to help put the charge yes. back in it. You got it. You got it. Okay. Um, obviously, it's a, it's not a, um, you know, it can only go so far. We can only push the body so far. So I do um, get the information. I do get the question, you know, is can you do too much? Um, you know, how, how come this is not... Um, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not a miracle. We'll put it that way. We can only push the body and push the cells with PEMF or with laser to the body's maximum potential of doing things. So it is not bringing in something artificial. So we can, so we can push the body to its highest level of performance that it is physically capable of in that moment in time. So, so for instance, if say you were mineral deficient, you couldn't push the cell to optimum because it doesn't have the minerals it needs. Correct. So you, so, so we still have to go back to diet for lack of a better word to supply the body with the building blocks it needs to be able to be healthy. 100%. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Perfect example. Yeah. Um, so what do we get? With PEMF, we get cell proliferation, we get collagen formation, we reduce inflammation, um, increase circulation, increase oxygenation of tissue, pain reduction, all sorts of benefits on a cellular cell signaling um, and overall um, immune, immune response and, and, and the cell proliferation is huge when you're doing, um, when you're doing cellular repair. Um, college information, extremely important, as we know, when you're trying to, um, to rehab a, uh, a lesion or a, a hole in a tendon or a ligament. Um, so all of these things, muscle, muscle regeneration and, and muscle atrophy, a lot of people will use PEMF um, pre and post competition um, to help either a lot of people will use it to warm up, um, let's say, a older horse that may have had some, um, it's it's kind of older in age. We all have more inflammation. It's there's that as we get older, maybe the, the horse has had some injuries in the past that we really want to help protect. I, I, I like to kind of think of PEMF prior to um, um, a workout or competition as kind of a cell, a warm up on a cellular level. So we're starting to get the t um, um, protective fluids going into the joints. We are increasing oxygen in the blood, which in helps to enhance performance and endurance. Um, so using PEMF prior to um, can be a great way um, to think of, to, to protect pre-competition, to keep the inflammation down and to enhance performance naturally, because again, you're not pushing the body past what it can do naturally. So 
lots of questions that we get of what actually can we use PEMF for. Any soft tissue injury, um, any degenerative type of condition. So that could be arthritis, degenerative joint diseases. Um, and so soft tissue could be muscles, soft tissue could be tendon or ligament. Um, any of your conditions in the joints, neurologic conditions, because you think about your neurons are talking to each other through these little ion exchanges and you know they shoot from one um, end of the neuron to the next um, through electrical communication. So um, neuro neuro neurological conditions, uh, fractures are 100% a 100% a no brainer because that was what PEMF was actually FDA approved for in the very beginning. Um, inflammation, uh, fluid retention, edema, pain management, um, and then any of your hoof conditions, laminitis navicular, for instance, um, it is it is very difficult to get some of the other modalities, laser, for instance, into the hoof. That hoof wall is dense. It is very thick, it's obviously for a reason. Um, but when something happens to go wrong inside of there, it is difficult sometimes to get a therapeutic type of energy into the hoof. Um, PEMF goes through the hoof wall like it's um, like it's paper. It just it that does not impact it. So PEMF is a great option for any of your conditions in the hoof. Um, contraindications. So so pregnancy is one we have there have been no studies. Um, there we just you know we don't want to um, impact the the natural growth process. So pregnancy is one. Um, if you're using a extremely targeted PEMF device um, where you're hitting just a hoof, for instance, that's no problem at all. You really just want to be careful that you're not um, uh, using the PEMF field um, right over the belly or uterus. Tumors and cancer, uh, another big question. Um, we, we touched on the fact that you've got so many different variables in PEMF. Again, going back to frequency, waveform, intensity, how often you're using it, how long period of time are you using it. So we combine all these variables with the myriad of different kinds of cancer and there is just not enough research. Um, there's interesting research coming out, um, looking at PEMF as a benefit um, to help either um, counteract the um, unfortunate uh, effects of chemotherapy, the side effects of chemotherapy, um, and to, to, um, to even potentially combat the cancer itself. But there is not enough research because there are so many variations and variables and if the research just hasn't been done. So we err on the side of caution um, when it comes to tumors and cancer and say, do not use the PEMF um, in conjunction with that. Unless, um, you know, on our canine side, we have canine PEMF beds and some of the dogs um, who are older find such benefit in quality of life from using the PEMF that they opt with the, cons the cons consulting with their veterinarian to continue to use PEMF, um, you know, accepting that that there is kind of an unknown as it relates to cancer. So I do have a I lot of think in the dog's case, too. It's their choice to get on the bed. Oh, yeah. 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 You'll you'll see the dogs. Sometimes all, all you have to do is they have to see the blinking light and they kind of flock right to the bed. So um, you, you should know. Well, well, we'll touch on that in just a minute about you know, which device um, kind of is best for what. Um, but one more contraindication, because PEMF is, is um, approved for healing of bone fractures, we know that it is very good with healing of bone and bone formation. So we don't really want to, just like with pregnancy, interfere with the natural process of a young animal whose growth plates are not yet fully formed. Again, there is no research on it. It's sort of a kind of one that has just been different, different pieces of information. And, you know, logically people are like, you know what, let's just not mess with that. So, and this is on a regular basis. So if you've got um, an animal who um, fractured a leg due to an accident and they're young, very young, there's no reason you can't use the PEMF a few times for helping of inflammation and pain and to like kind of get them more comfortable in that initial phase, but we do not recommend regular use of the PEMF on the young animals. 
that that would also kind of apply to if you have a fracture, don't use it until the fracture is set because you might not want it to start healing where it is. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would. <laughs> You're not, yes, we, we would like it to get put in place first and then we can help seal that that um, that crack, basically. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I just have a, some studies coming up. But before I, so before I get into those, um, maybe I'll just jump back to. So, so it's a good break. So somebody's asking if you could use it with melanomas or insulin resistance or Cushing's. Uh, good question. I had Cushing's question just the other day. Um, Cushing's is a, is a pituitary, it's a hormonal issue. Um, so, so PEMF obviously focuses on cell signaling. So our, my recommendation to the person who just, who asked about Cushing is to consult with your veterinarian, um, prior to using the PEMF device. Technically there should be, we do not have a contraindication listed for any type of hormonal, um, conditions, but obviously you'd want to be, um, followed and, and in consultation with your veterinarian, if you're going to be introducing, um, you know, a new therapy to, to a Cushing's, um, patient basically. And so with like, uh, melanoma, since that's a tumor, you would also want to be super careful. tumor. Yeah. The tumor we would, we would, that is a, a listed contraindication. So, um, we would not want to use the PEMF directly over that particular tumor, um, but you can use it on other parts of the body uh, if it's a targeted PEMF device. Yeah, the problem with gray horses that have melanomas is you don't know where all the tumors are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when you say very young, like yep. in, uh, what's what's your definition of? Yeah, that? so that yeah, so so that's one um, you know that that we hear all the time. So so. Like on the canine side, for instance, if you're going to have a dog that's doing agility, they don't start running them until their growth plates have closed because of the potential issues that have been found of um, the arthritis and of, of pushing an animal too soon with too much impact before their bones and their growth plates are fully formed and closed. Um, the, the resulting effect could be early onset arthritis um, and, and other types of, of chronic degenerative types of issues because the, they did not form well to begin with. Um, so then we get to horses where you've got your, you know, you have two to four year olds racing. Um, they, are, they, are, they are not necessarily um, fully, fully matured. Um, at that point, yet they're, they're, we're putting that much impact on their joints. So yeah, you sort of get stuck in this. Technically they shouldn't be running that hard at that age. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's too young to run with that much impact and that much intensity when they're, they are not fully formed with, with their bones and their joints and their growth plates as of yet. But, but if we are doing that, then having a device that can help keep that inflammation down and in check, if they are working that intense level at that age, then it helps offset, I guess we'll put it that way. So it, it's a hard, that that's a hard one when you come, when you, when you come to horses, um, I think I would balance the, whether or not to use PEMF on how much you're training um, that particular horse at that age at that time. And you can also check for whether or not the growth plates are closed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I Absolutely. Think that goes back to you, you need to like, know your horse, work with your vet, check your horse. Yes. Make yes. a decision, you know, that's balanced. All the good horse and good horsemen um, do that. And women, yeah. horsemen and women. Yes. Yes. Which is, yeah. Exactly. So, so back to the question about the melanoma. So if, uh, if they're known to have melanoma, I mean, but it's the same kind of question. You know, the problem with melanoma is you don't, you, you can only see the ones that show up. Right. So you have to balance that with. Yep. With, okay, I don't know if this is, you know, it, it conceivably PEMF should be impacting the healthy cells only. Uh, but we don't have enough research to know if, one of the one of the benefits of PEMF is that um, 
cell proliferation. The last thing we want to do is proliferate a melanoma. So, so that's where we don't have enough information. So, so it's up to the individual therapist, trainer, horse owner, and the veterinarian to determine if this therapy is where this therapy lies and whether or not they should use it. Right. with with that type of condition and someone's asking if that's the same with sarcoids and i i think again you have to look at where it is what yeah. part of the body you want to treat yes and that would that would then make help you with decisions about what kind of PEMF device to use if you were going to do a targeted versus a whole yes body. exactly exactly so to that point um that's where um you have a myriad of of different types of PEMF devices out there. Um, some are very low intensity, some are middle on intensity, some are very high on intensity. So I like to, to, to say the, the high intensity ones, um, all PEMF addresses pain and inflammation, all of them. Um, high intensity is very good at addressing pain. Uh, it, it's, it releases intense amount of endorphins um, and can block pain. So the high intensity devices should be used in the hands of a skilled therapist. The, you are using energy. Um, you, when use the wrong high intensity, when used the wrong way, um, can, can be un, very uncomfortable, I guess. Um, you, you know, like you wouldn't use high intensity PEMF on an EPM horse. Um, so you really need to find your, which device is best for that particular condition. Um, high intensity, I sometimes equate to something like a shockwave. It can be really beneficial um, when trying to um, jumpstart a healing. Like let's say you've got a suspensory that just hasn't gotten where it needs to go um, and it's not filling in and you're just not getting that. So high, you can give it a great high intensity PEMF treatment or a shockwave treatment to really jumpstart it. That, uh, that high energy is going to, to really get through to those cells. Um, so high intensity can, can be great on conditions like that. Um, degenerative types of conditions where you really need to jumpstart um, and get through to something. I, I kind of can call them like cold conditions or like any kind of degenerative condition those cells are really unreceptive. So sometimes they need that high energy, that high intensity to actually get through and start a process going. Um, and those devices, you know, high intensity, you can be very, you can be very targeted with those. Um, you can also be very targeted with a lower intensity device. There are some um, very low intensity loops out there, um, but because of that intensity, um, you're gonna get very little penetration. So if you're trying to treat deep into a particular area on a horse, a low intensity loop probably isn't going to be your best option, even though it is targeted to that area. It's just not going to get deep enough. Um, so that's where a higher intensity targeted um, device could be beneficial. And then you get um, like the mid-level types of devices. So um, where you're getting a pretty good depth of penetration, it's not as high as energy. Um, and what those are really good for are your um, prehab, I call it, or preventative and maintenance because they are um, very like low enough in intensity that you can use them on a regular basis. So a lot of people will use that mid-level um, for uh, prevention and maintenance. Um, as well as for addressing the continued healing process of some uh, of an acute condition, for instance. So let's say you've got um, a suspensory um, lesion, for instance, and you have maybe given it a few high intensity shockwave treatments, you can't, or, or high intensity pump treatments. You can't keep doing that on a daily basis. Um, it's just too much energy. You got to give the cells time to now use that energy and carry it forward. And that's where a mid to low level intensity PEMF can be very beneficial is to take what you've started with maybe a high intensity and now sustain that continued stimulation over a longer time. Because as we all know, tissue doesn't repair itself overnight, um, especially bugger type of dense tissue like a tendon or ligament. You don't even have a chart that kind of talks about the intensity and the depth that Yeah, you know. yeah, I should yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, I should that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that right next I mean it's a lot of information. Um so let me see if I can figure this out. Um 
Oh, high intensity is going to penetrate deeper. Yes. But you wouldn't use it as frequently. Correct. Because you have to give the cells chance to heal. Correct. Mid range, you can use kind of more frequently. As nudging. You're, you're nudging these cells more consistently to continue through that healing process. So you might go through the acute phase and you go through, you have heat and then you go through the middle phase, which is more repair. And then we got scar tissue that formed a little and now we want to get rid of that. So think of middle kind of as a daily or multiple day a week nudge for those cells to continue what you want them to do. And then low intensity is going to be more surface. So if you had a tendon, you could use a low intensity because it's targeted to an area that's close to the surface. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Or so, you have a smaller, yeah, a smaller so animal. We've got intensity, but then we have to talk about frequency. Correct. Yes. So frequency, frequency. not just in frequency of treatments, treatments, but frequency of yeah, I'm actually going to pop out of because here. Because intensity and frequency are not the same thing, right? Correct. Correct. Intensity and frequency are not the same. So frequency um, you think of as pulses per second. So you have some devices that allow you to alter your pulse frequency um, and some devices it's set. So that is something to look at when you're looking at different options of PEMF. Um, can you turn up or down the intensity and a lot of your high high intensity machines you can you can all you can turn that dial down if you need to and make it a lower level targeted device um and then you've got some devices where you this is it one size fits all one intensity one frequency and then you have others where you have um the option to alter uh, frequency or intensity so all things you can look at because not not every horse is the same. Not every condition is the same. It's nice to have a device that provides you with options to tweak here or there based on the response that you're seeing. But that can get, um, you know, for someone who is just starting into PIMF, all those options can get really overwhelming really fast. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. So you want to focus on what is your main objective in this moment? Um, because some people just have an injury they need to heal. Like that's where they're going. Um, so, so look at, and they only have one horse, one injury. This is what I want to do. Um, others have a whole barn full of, you know, 10 different horses with 10 different personalities and issues going on. And um, so, so kind of looking at your needs, uh, doing a needs analysis. And the, another piece of that is, um, you know, cost is obviously a huge factor. What what can you afford? Um, maybe the an, a nice option is to uh, when you need your high intensity treatments because those are the more expensive machines. Um, maybe you get a practitioner in your area, an educated you know trained practitioner to come do those treatments, and then you have something in between that you can use to sustain that and on a more regular basis. Sometimes we have people that um, like laser, for instance, that we have. If you're not going to get out to the barn and laser actively for 15 to 20 minutes, this particular condition, because you just don't have the time or, or whatever it is, having a wrap um, that you can just turn on for 30 minutes and go do other things in the barn might be where the best the best option for you. So you you, you sort of want to do your own needs analysis. What are you capable of doing? Do you want a device where you just put it on, turn it on for 30 minutes? Do you have the time to do an active 20 to 30 minute treatment, um, you know, and, and what your price point is at, um, how many horses do you have? So, so sort of taking it back to you of like, all right, let me do a little needs. If I'm going to spend X amount uh, on my own device, you know, instead of using a practitioner and both options are phenomenal. Um, okay. So let, let's just first say that there's the first category is do it yourself or hire someone to do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when yes. you're hiring someone to do it, you're assuming that they are trained in their technology. They yes. can make the decisions of frequency and intensity. Yes. And then it's sad that frequency is also frequency of treatment, but number of treatments. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Number. Okay. Yeah. So they can make that decision. And it may be if you're trying to, to um, deal with, a, say, a particular injury, it's better to have someone who is knowledgeable and trained so they can make the appropriate decisions educated decisions to treat your horse. Yes. Okay. Should that not be available or that you have multiple horses and you, you want to have a device that you can use when you want to use it, then we have to look at cost. Yep. Purpose. Yes. What you want to use it for. Okay. And 
education. Absolutely. Because you can, I mean, like when we were at AATT, there were a couple of different units there Mm -hmm. and the prices were all over. Yes. And one of them, which was really interesting to look at, somebody said, the thing is so heavy. I need two people to put it on the horse. Yes. Right. Whereas others are lightweight and easy to do. So we have to consider ease of use. Yes. Yes. All of those, all those variables, all those, how it relates to you and then to your horse or horses and just take the time to do an, uh, you know, a needs analysis basically. And, and what you're capable of with budget and um, you know, everything that's going on in in your world and the horse's world to find a device that will be best to fit your needs. Right. And so um, there are some devices where it's like uh, for lack of a better word, small, medium, large, in right. terms of the settings. Yes. Okay. I assume there are other devices where you can dial in a lot more things. Mm-hmm. So if you're a techie person, which unfortunately I know a lot of horse people are not techie people. Like I can, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> reducing the number of choices is perhaps a good idea, but you have to realize that by reducing the number of choices, you may not, it may not, be quite getting what you want done because we've made it chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Right. Right. But the downs, the upside of that is you got three choices. This is it. On the other hand, having more ability to vary. So if you're sort of a more techie person and you like to be able to dial things in, I, I'm, I guess what I'm thinking of, I got a competition bar and I got a groom, right? She's going to be doing every single horse. Yes. She's going to figure out what every horse needs. I don't have to worry about it. They're all going to get the treatment they need. I'm good. Yep. Versus I'm, you know, like struggling with Google and I can barely use my cell phone, having something really simple. Simple. Yes. Yes. Yep. And all of those exist. You've got within the PEMF world, especially when it comes to horses, because that's where it really, st- I mean, aside from the FDA approvals, you know, it really, equine is where it really started to flourish and come through. So you have a lot of options, a lot of choices. So, um, you know, do, do, if you're going to spend that, if you're going to spend money. What is uh, a rough idea on the price range on the blankets? What is, what is the your, most blankets that you see? the ones that I know of that you're going to range um, probably the sweet spots around 5,000. I don't think you're going to get anything under four these days um, for a blanket and they can range, I'd say probably four to six or 7,000. Okay. So that's a pretty hefty investment uh, for a blanket. Um, But then there's wraps, loops, Wraps, loop, exactly. Wraps, loops, wraps, loops, and blankets are what you pretty much have right now. Okay. Um, and then um, actually, I'm, I'm going to pop on. I see some people um, had asked questions too. Yeah. So, um, um, I'm going to just go from that. I'm trying down. to get through. Uh, so somebody's asking about wraps, blankets attached to wall versus oh. electrical. Oh, you're you're going to get oh, most okay. of your wraps and blankets um, do not attach to the wall. Uh, your higher intensity, which need more energy to, because they're giving out more energy, they need more energy coming in. Most of your high intensities will be, um, will attach to an electrical outlet, but your wraps and blankets, um, 90% of all of them that I know of run on a battery pack. So we're looking at coils and things if they're high intensity um, uh, plug into the wall things. High intensity, you're going to plug into the wall. Um, blankets, all the blankets that I know of are battery operated. And average cost on a high intensity plug into the wall style unit. That I'm not hundred percent sure. I know, I think you're looking north of 10,000. Um, wow. so big investment. So if somebody's a therapist and they come to you and they have one of these, they have put some in time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that. they, and, and the, it's a, it's a pricier device. Um, it, sh- and you should be the, the one. It should be used in the hands of somebody to, to Wendy, to your point that, that knows what they're doing with it. So it's, it's, it's nice to have a practitioner in that case that is trained, a physiotherapist, a therapist, a vet in your neck of the woods, um, who uses those higher intensity because it's, they know how much, what intensity to dial it up to. Um, and, and, you know, it's very nice to have that expertise uh, with that machine. Okay. 
Um, let's see. I think so. We covered that. Um, so stacking PEMF. I see we right. have one about stacking PEMF with red light or laser. No problem at all. Um, they work through two totally different biochemical mechanisms um, within the body. I have um, with the blanket, it's not as easy, but our um, canine who lay on a bed and are exposed to the field, I have practitioners who do their laser while the dog is on the PEMF bed. So literally concurrently, right. um, no contraindication at all. Um, um, and surefoot, you can have the horses on surefoot pads and do Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Let's see. How does somebody's asking about a blanket comparing to a device such as a Healy? I am not familiar with a Healy. Okay. Um, probably a plug in device, Kathy. You can let us know. Um, we're I still asking about gray horses and PEMF. I think it's basically. Talk you know, to your vet. It's, a, it's a decision between you. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. We just, it is just not. Uh, it is a contraindication because there's just not enough research. So we would say consult with your veterinarian. Um, there, I mean, technically there could be zero impact with the cancer, but we do not know and cannot say that confidently. Um, and that's, that's all we can say with the gray horses. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Um, people may be using it on gray horses, but Prior to, they might even be using it on horses with melanomas, but, it, but there's not enough information yeah. to for us to make a to talk about it. Uh, a Healy is a small device with an app on your phone that you set up beside yourself or your animal. Oh. Is it a pen device? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll look it up, Kathy. I'm not, I, not, you know, I always like to check out the other things that are out. Uh, somebody's asking how pen works with healing laminitis, but you're going to be you're trying to make those cells healthy, right? We we want to. A laminitis is a huge inflammatory issue. Um, so we want to address that inflammation and that's where the PEMF, um, when it cut, we can't say nobody, we can't say because we are not a FDA approved, our device is not FDA approved. I can't say it heals laminitis. I can't say that it heals any, any particular condition. What I can say is that it will address the inflammation um, related to laminitis. Um, and once we start addressing that inflammation, the cell and recharging the cell, then we get the oxygenation and, and, and cell proliferation in a healthy way. And that's it, it with laminitis is inflammation. We want to get that inflammation down to see if we can then, and, and to, to Wendy's point before too, it is not a panacea, not, you know, laser's not, PEMP is not. You also want to be working closely with your farrier, you know, and making sure that our shoes are correct um, and, and altering things in combination with each other. So the well, PEMP, yeah. yeah, and with laminitis, you have to look at, you have to get rid of the cause. If you have a metabolic horse, reducing yes. inflammation in the foot is not going to solve the problem because you haven't fixed the problem. The feet, your, your feet is off. Right, exactly. Right. So yeah. I think that, that with with any disease, I think the biggest thing is, um, source. From, we need to find the source. Right. And that's what I'm hearing from you. PEMF can help, PEMF, PEMF can help with inflammation. It can help the cells get in balance. But if you don't remove the problem. Um, if your problem is inflammation, then we're going to address the problem. But why right. are we, infl is it because we overused it? Um, is it because there's an injury? Is it because, to Wendy's point, it's metabolic? We changed our feed. We're eating different. Or you know, is it environmental? It, do I have EPM? Um, do I have disease? Disease? Yeah. 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 So what is our source? And 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 sometimes it's just um, age, right? It's just mobility and age. And, 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 you know, in that case, you're talking about inflammation. And that's where... Um, you know, you're not, you're not addressing a specific condition. <laughs> We're just getting old. Um, so we, we just want to try to give ourselves and our bodies a better chance by making them in tip top shape um, in that particular. So I know there's a lot of um, uh, conversation about how PEMF increases oxygenation. Mm -hmm. um, is that because we're impacting the 
the, how does that happen? Is that so okay? you think about kind of that cell membrane picture that I had mm -hmm. um, when what we're going to do is we're going to normalize that membrane. So oxygen can flow into the cell and we also increase circulation in general. So think about um, uh, what is what is one main um, aspect of blood is iron. We all know that iron is carried in the blood, right? So iron, um, just like in the core of the earth. Oh, um, oh duh. Yeah, we're going back. <laughs> Woo. So the PEMF actually can speak to that iron in the blood cell itself to help um, trigger movement. The pulsing aspect, that's where PEMF differs from your static magnets. The pulsing aspect of the PEMF helps to push um, the, the iron helps to push those ions, um, which then, you know, oxygen is carried on the blood, you know, so sure, that's the way sure. we get circulation, increase in oxygenation. Okay. That, that makes, this is the first time I've actually understood that. Oh, good. <laughs> basically, we're, basically we have iron in our blood. It's electromagnetic. And we're pulse, pushing it. Yeah. It, yeah. It just kind of moves it along. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Thank okay. you. That's really helpful. Um, you know, because it's easy to get overwhelmed with information in this subject. Absolutely. And choices. So if someone, and maybe I, this is a simple, if someone wanted to uh, dabble, isn't the right word to look into PEMF, but look into it in a, in a exploratory way, would mm -hmm. it, would it make sense to get a, less expensive item and try it on them themselves. Like if they had a, a, a you know, like bang their wrist or something like that. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We get the question all the time. Can I use your device on? So I say, basically it works. It's, it is FDA approved for use on humans. Um, our specific device is not because that costs a lot of money and then it would be, we, we're not using it for people. So that price point would get translated down to our customers and that's, there's no point. Um, so we cannot say we cannot market it to people but it has the exact same effect um, on a human cell as it does on an equine cell. Um, so we just say from a treatment perspective, um, yeah, you, you, you should consult with your physician prior to starting any new therapies. <laughs> I understand that caveat. <laughs> um, and so that might be something where um, somebody who's really curious about it, they could get a less expensive loop, mm -hmm. um, play with it oh, themselves rentals. a lot of a lot of a lot of companies will Ooh. do rentals mm -hmm. oh that's a great option rentals so you can rent it for um you know a, a 90 day period and trial it with no obligation oh wow oh so there's probably a lot of companies that actually oh, sure yeah okay that's a great option because you know again it's it's a big investment and if you're not using it well uh, and you're not using it if it just sits on the shelf it's not going to work yeah exactly exactly I have one doing just that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. I have one last question for you. I don't know if anybody else has a question. You brought up um, um, shockwave. Mm -hmm. Is shockwave electromagnetic? Sound. So shockwave is using sound waves okay. as opposed to um, electromagnetic waves. Okay. So just like laser uses um, light waves, photon. Um, so you're they're 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 all waves. One is electromagnetic, one is uh, light, and another is um, and light is a type type of electromagnetism, but different than an EMF. Um, but shockwave, you're using sound waves. Got it. Um, that question on sarcoids came up again. I think the answer is don't use the the pimp on the sword. Correct. But you could use it on other places on the horse. Correct. Correct. Yep. Um, and if someone's asking where to learn to become a practitioner, I think you'd have to just kind of figure out what unit you were interested in mm -hmm. and then explore their options because there's different different manufacturers have different options. On yeah. That. And and um, <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> the name on that one's funny. And to me, um, Actually, that's part of what the, the AAETT um, organization is really working towards establishing some standards with 
practitioner, like where to go for places like to, to that exact question, um, because there isn't there isn't like a, a, a certification school right now that you can go to for these. So the AAETT organization really is working towards putting that type of um, resource together as well. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of the AATT, please go to their website. Um, I'll just pop it in the chat. It's AATT.org. Um, they're working really hard to start coming up with uh, national standards and um, for therapists and technicians and working with vets. And so we have standardized mm -hmm. um uh, resources, resources. And also like, because we're heading into this vet crisis that we can actually help out with that crisis that's yeah. just barreling down on us. Um, awesome. Lisa, is there anything else you want to tell us about? Uh, this has been really informative and really helpful. Good, good. Um, yeah. Somebody did put up what I will just read it. So it's, it's on the recording weak force. The weak force is responsible for radioactive decay and neutrino interactions. It is a very short range and its name indicates it's a very weak. The weak force causes beta decay, i.e. the conversion of a neutron into a proton or an electron in an, in an anti neutrino. Okay. Um, strong force. The strong force interaction is a very strong, but very short ranged. It is responsible for holding the nuclei of atoms together. Oh, that's important. Um, <laughs> it's basically attractive, but can be effectively repulsive in some circumstances. The strong force is carried particles called gluons. That is, when two particles interact through the strong force, they do so by exchanging gluons. Thus, the quarks inside of the protons and neutrons are bound together by the exchange of the strong nuclear force. Okay, we're just going to go with strong and weak force. <laughs> you can get pretty deep in this stuff, but I think, you know, gravity and electromagnetism is just fine. Um, this has been awesome. I want to thank you so much because this has really helped clarify Good. what it is and why we might want to use it and... Um, it's just important. I think the bottom line message is you have to figure out what you're wanting to treat. You got to yes. check out what's in that range, what's going to work best for you. Consult with your vet if it's any question. Right. And, um, uh, watch your frequency, intensity, and and duration. And we didn't talk about duration. Yeah, yeah. and I did see a question in there. Somebody asked how often um, should I be treating? So um, you. So it depends on the device. Um, and what your objective is. So we, for for our level of intensity that we're, we're kind of that mid range, um, we recommend um, starting off with three to five days a week to start because it's like um, pushing a snowball down a mountain. If you push something once, you're gonna get an effect. It's gonna move, um, but it'll stop pretty quickly. Um, so what we wanna do is to continue to push it for uh, multiple treatments in a row daily um, to, so then when we stop and we take that treatment away, we've built this sustained move momentum and it continues to go a while in between. How more frequently we do it will depend on the horse, will depend on the condition, will depend on the overall health. Um, you may hit a maintenance phase with a arthritic type of condition of two days a week. Um, for something acute because it's repairing and moving so quickly to continue to hit daily until you hit sort of that slow down and we're pretty much healed phase um, can be beneficial with something with a higher intensity. Um, that one I'm not as familiar with, but I think those packages are probably like maybe a two or three package or three to five session, maybe a couple weeks apart for higher, but it depends on what you're using it for. Cause a lot of the high intensity devices, you can turn them down and maybe use them weekly for, for a maintenance type of uh, condition. So it, it really depends on the intensity of your machine, um, how often you're treating as well as the condition itself. How often. You know, I, I think the one thing that uh, we may not have talked about is, how long is a session? How long? That's a good question. Um, they're going to range um, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes for one of your low to mid intensity um, systems where you can put them on the horse and sort of walk away. Um, I know the 15 minute ones are supposed to be used multiple times a day. Um, so you get maybe a 45 minute to hour session uh, broken out into 15 minute sessions. 
Ours is a 30 minute and then your high intensity is going to depend on what you're treating. Uh, it could be a two minute session, um, you know, if you're just hitting a small spot um, or it could be, you know, a, a half an hour body work type of session. So it's going to vary based on your device. Is there any value? And I'm asking this because this is for my, um, is there any value in like you do a 30 minute and then you do it again? Is there any value? Oh, yep. Yeah. So you, so going back to, you can only push the cell so far. Um, PMF, you're, you're at the right intensity. You're not going to, you can't cause damage. So once you've pushed a cell to its limit, um, that's it. Like your PMF sort of just going to pass right through. So you can add the extra half an hour on, um, and depending on what kind of condition it is, that extra half an hour could continue to be beneficial, but we have found with our particular, a half an hour really is um, giving the cells as much, as much stimulation as they can handle. Okay. And then now we, we pull back and we let the cells now carry that and do what they need to do. Um, so the extra half an hour may not push them more than another 10% farther. So, yeah. And I, I have to admit, I'm guilty of going, well, let's just do it three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> this feels good. Just keep pushing the button. Right. So, so the bottom line is that if you do the time that's recommended for what you're treating with the intensity and frequency, yes. then doing it again, isn't really, um, it's diminishing return. You're really correct. Correct. Diminishing return. The only time you're, you're going to potentially is if your sole objective is pain management, um, that's when maybe using it four times a day because it's going to have an immediate pain relief um, effect. And if your sole objective is pain management right now, then then you can use it more than you would be for um, a healing type of condition, you know, we're managing inflammation. Okay. Well, uh, this, this has been great. I am so thankful that you have made the time to talk to us because I, I think you have answered probably like 90% of the questions. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, do you uh, just, just, you just ask which company I, I can't believe. I was oh, going to say, just put your credentials there in the, or your, how to contact you if they have more questions. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'll pop that in there. Yep. I had it on the end of my slide, my slide, but I got sidetracked and did not do the end of my slides. Um, all right. You know, that was when I met Lisa at AATT, I was like, oh, she's the person I want to have because um, she was talking about laser. And when I listened to her talk about laser, I was like, this is the kind of depth of understanding that I want to have when I'm doing something like this. And if you want to talk laser too down the line, let me know. Happy to. We'd love to have you come back yep. and talk yep. laser. Um, that won't be till I get back from Kenya. <laughs> have fun. So exciting. I will. So thanks so much. And thank you everybody for joining me. I will be posting this webinar in the uh, webinars with Wendy on the Kartra page. So you can access it there anytime. Um, we'll get that up later on today. So stay tuned and we'll have it up there for you. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye guys.